Well, USP have asked me to not divulge any information that they might have on records about anyone they have locked up here or anyone they're going after. Well, no shit, Sherlock. Also, taking a look at the comments you lot left on that last podcast. I mean, for my first one, I tried my best. Well, I say my best. I could have probably tried harder. I could have probably been a little bit more sober, but still. Dumpy Doncaster should kill himself. Dumpy Doncaster should eat his own shit. I want to skip my cock in Dumpy Doncaster's hairy ass. And well, <laughs> all I can say to that is, buy me dinner first, then we'll talk. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yes, um, welcome to the Dumfrey Doncaster podcast. And uh, today I am going to be talking you through uh, my first sort of uh, proper assignment, mission, whatever you want. Basically the first thing USB actually properly paid me for. Though you'd think for my unique abilities, the pay would be a bit higher, but apparently not. No, 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 because apparently anyone can do what I do. Oh, yes, 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 anyone can do it. I mean, it's not like a unique ability. <sighs> Just control your anger, Dolphy. Control it. Remember, you're doing this podcast. Why don't you ease yourself down? Calm it. Ah, miss, okay. Okay, I, I think I'm good. Yes, yes, I think I'm ready. I can, I can tell this story, no problem. So get your popcorn ready. Get on with it. Uh, Anyhow, um... When we all got back to USP after stopping my uh, fashion fur pursuer from before, we were finally given a proper introduction from what was to become our commanding officer, Commander Spat. Yes, I know. Commander Spat, come on, really? Like, but, yeah, I guess it's just something you have to just accept out here. I mean, with everything and that, you just have to accept it, take it in, otherwise uh, you might go insane. And who knows, maybe I have. Heck, maybe I'm not even doing a podcast. Maybe I'm just sitting in a room, just endlessly talking to myself. It wouldn't surprise me. Am I hallucinating everything? Who knows? Am I even real? Is this real? Is this life? (sighs) You know, you know what life really is, though? don't you? It's just a long, long distraction from the inevitable death that we will all experience, one way or another. You know, it's just a shame in life that the one thing, the one thing that is absolutely 100% guaranteed to happen is that you're going to die. That's it. That's the one thing. From the moment you're born, the one thing you can bank on is the fact that you're going to die. That is the one piece of absolute certainty. And and, and just the thing is, you know, you think there'd be more to life than just that. But when I think about it, there's really not. But I did realise something, though. And, you know, call it whatever you want, but... There is a way to sort of cheat death. I mean, yourself, you'll physically have to die, but the thing is, though, if you're remembered and you sort of leave a legacy or something behind, you know, or if you're just remembered in general, then are you truly dead? You know? 
because people can go back and, you know, either read about your life and that, or find out stuff about it. I mean, in the end, that's what I'm just trying to do, really. I guess, in the end, I, 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 just, I just don't want to be forgotten. And after what happens in this first mission, well, let's just say, I do appreciate where I am more, but it does make me scared at the same time. But, um, I digress. So, Kavana Spat. Well, he pretty much gave us a general tour round and that. Uh, not particularly interesting. I mean, basically, it's kind of like any other office-y sort of place on the inside. He showed us what were to be our quarters and that. Very bland, very basic. I mean, it's better than, say, an army camp and that. You know, we did have sort of proper bags. Although, I say proper bags, although the bags could not have uh, springs in them. Or should I say the mattresses? Uh, the mattresses uh, were made of a memory foam sort of material. I don't really know what it was. But uh, presumably it was safe and also weighed less. Nevertheless, that didn't matter to me. I found them more comfortable anyway, actually. Yeah, quite nice. So I guess it's like one of those things, you know, it's a, it's a bed. It gets the job done at the end of the day when you're knackered. And believe me, uh, <laughs> in my time, I've heard... Uh, Beaning and also uh, woke up in some, well, very uncomfortable bags. I mean, you know, when you see a person on a night out and that, um, you're generally not very picky and choosy about uh, what bed you're going to be sleeping in throughout the night if they're agreeing to suck your cock. So, there you go. After that, uh, our commander just went off and that well on his use and he said he would uh, call for us when he was... Available for us to go on some sort of mission or something. Um, I properly severed up my this point and uh, realising what I'd done earlier to Tom and that. And the way I've been treating him, not really giving him much of an option into this new lifestyle. Um, well, I finally had a chat with him. And uh, he said to me that uh, he forgave me. He knew that it wasn't easy being me and that generally life is kind of shit in the end but you know he he said that my heart was in the right place I doubt it is but it was nice of him to say so anyway I'm not quite sure where my heart is right now actually I'm assuming it's still in the same place or around about there it feels like it when it's beating although who knows maybe that's just an echo off my rib cage. who knows so anyway, the three of us, me, Billy and Tom, we just kind of just sat for a bit and just chatted about stuff and that and got reacquainted with each other properly again. I mean, you know, although we do work together a lot and that, we generally don't socialise that much together, at least not the three of us. Um, I tend to make things difficult and maybe I do tend to ruin things and that... I'm saying it's not deliberate. Maybe it is. Who knows? Anyway, after about two to three-ish hours, Commander Smack came back in and presented us with some uniforms and said that we were going on our first proper mission. Of course, I replied with Swift, Fuck off, I'm not wearing that. I mean, come on. These things were chrome bright and sparkly almost. And that. I mean, you know, you just... What? Are you asking to be shot? Is all I'm saying. Is are are you asking to be shot? Or are we just dummies, you know, put at the front to get shot at or killed or captured or whatever, while you go off and do, you know, other stuff? Are we just, you know, sort of standing for you? I actually think about it. We actually might be, but even so, uh, I said I'd be sticking to my red and black check shirt and jeans. Billy, of course, being Billy, following my rebellious nature. Tom was a little bit unsure. He was thinking about it. I could see he was sort of on the fence about it. But in the end, and that, uh, after the chat we had, he felt that he should stand with us, so none of us decided to put on any of the uniforms. Which did piss off our commander, but, uh, you know, hey, 
you want you want my unique abilities uh my completely unique look goes along with this yes completely unique absolutely unique it's not like i just got this stuff from primark on the cheap no 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 it's unique we then walked off and entered a sort of holographic deck which surprisingly showed us holograms of who we were going after next spiz mckendry was his name and what a name spings mckendry what a, you know that, that's quite nice isn't it kind of rolls off the tongue quite nice spiz mckendry Anyway, his whole illegal business and operation was smuggling rare or obscure artefacts. And selling some on the black market, but keeping the majority to himself. According to the local intel on that, he didn't actually make a huge profit in that on anything. Just enough to pay his employees and pay his general livings and that. So, this was a guy who was basically just stealing stuff he wanted but couldn't afford. I mean, in some ways, it does seem a bit more honourable. He's not just buying it to sell it off. He's stealing it and that, and just keeping it for, for himself. So, like, a, a collection, a collector. Like, an intergalactic collector, but uh, taking to the extreme. And you thought some of the nerds and geeks on Earth were extreme with their collections, eh? Basically, I was to pose as a art collector who had collected some rare items that they were willing to sell this guy. The art collector himself was long since dead, apparently buying himself some folky explosives that blew himself up. Well, I guess the explosive part where they actually explode wasn't folky at all there, uh, just maybe the timer on it. But anyway, I was to pose as him in that scar, uh, making some deals and uh, get some information, but also on the set... Aim sort of from try and get him to spill the beans on where he keeps some of his collection. At the same time, Billy and Tom were going to infiltrate his base of operation, making sure to keep radio contact with me at all times so that if I heard something that would spill the beans on where it was, then they would hear, or if something was going wrong, vice versa, and that. Keep them in contact. That's good as long as no one blocks the signals. We all then got kitted up and put in our various disguises or camouflage to go after McHenry. Which, you know, kind of defeats the purpose of the uniforms. I mean, the uniforms I later found out really were only for, like, say, if you were going to just on a patrol in public or what? Space. Uh, space Republic. Uh, yes, but, uh, you know, but going on actual missions and that, you know, obviously. I w would be undercover and that in, in disguise, and Tom and Billy and that would normally be in some sort of ca camouflage and that, or something else to help them blend in and that, so yeah, there was really no point to that. Anyhow, on the journey there, Tom asked me, you're going to take this seriously, aren't you? I play him, uh, seriously, yeah, 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 no, 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 I'm just going to waltz in there, do a little tap that, and sing Licky's bollocks, aren't I? I said, look, look, listen, Tom, listen, 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 listen. You know, I might do some stupid shit, and I do, I do do some stupid shit, we all do, and that, you know, I I might get completely pissed out of my mind. I might have slept with that person, even though they might have had some deadly disease and that. I might have invited a bounty hunter into my house and that, but, you know, this, this is this. So this could get me killed and that. I mean, you know, I'd... Listen, listen. It's like... It's like what? Just take it this way. Just, just, just take it this way, Tom. Like, you know when one a job, one a gig or something and that. You know, do I always remember the lines and that? Do I make sure to remember everything, you know, absolutely precisely and that? So that we don't fuck up during it? Hmm? He nodded and agreed with me. Well, hell, it was true and that. I mean, when I was mimicking someone's voice, and I took that very suit. You see, and I made sure. You've just got to pick the right times and that, you know. Maybe this wasn't the right time and that. It'd be just all da 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 da. Everything's going to be okay and that. But at the same time, it just kind of makes you stressful at the same time. Maybe a more chill out sort of attitude and that maybe it can go a bit a long way i mean i didn't want to seem too stressed or tense especially for the artistic collector 
role I was now implying on. I even said to look, look, look. I mean, even though Omar Kendry has never met this art collector and that before, so he wouldn't know what he sounds like, it doesn't matter. Look, I'm watching some footage of him and that. I'm going to watch some footage of him and that. I'm going to make sure I'm mimicking perfectly and that. So he knows and that. Because, you know, how will he remember the voice anyway? Apparently, you know, it was just like over-the-air calls or something equivalent like that. So it's not something he's liable to maintain, but regardless, I will make it absolutely perfection. To make me appear to look like him was simple enough. They had what was called an ID mask. It was a simple thing. It went over your face. It was a mask and that. And then it changed your appearance and that to look like well, whoever you programmed it to look like to, in this case, our little uh, art collector guy. So, we were all set, we were all ready in that. We also had a cloaking device on the ship and that, and then sent me off in a private one down to where his base was on this planet called Tringra, Irindra, I don't know, something beginning with an I. Went down there and I went through all the usual security checks and that. And uh, luckily, since I've been doing my research, I got through it flawlessly. Meanwhile, Tom and Bill were just scouting the area, looking for a weak spot for them to enter McKendry's base. At the same time, I was being escorted into his main hall. McKendry himself sat in the middle on what could only be described as a giant throne. It was sort of a cross between a frog and a toad-like sort of creature, with one yellow beady eye looking at me, and another one that was clearly altered by robotics to look around the room, most likely checking for if I deceived him or not, or if there were any traps or any assassins or knacks around the room. I could see that this room also had a balcony going all the way around, with guards having weapons pointed at me every moment I stepped forward. And it was then that moment of realisation, you know, this was real, I mean, this is what I've got myself into, and, you know, I mean, before, with the first sort of-ish mission, you know, the first unofficial one and that, I mean, that was personal to me, that, you know, she wanted to take my fur and that, she wanted to kill me, but, you know, this person had done absolutely nothing to me, and in my eyes, you know, was it really worth risking my life or however many lives in this case and that? Because apparently, you know, this guy doesn't actually kill anyone unless they actually try to steal from him. So from my point personally, I would say just let him be. Then get on with what he's doing. I mean, obviously, try to stop him and that, try to stop him before, you know, he commits a crime, but <sighs> this is just... Tense. You know, I was beginning to sweat and I, I kept thinking to myself, I mustn't mumble, I must, you know, perfect. Uh, that's uh, our collector's voice absolutely perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. Which, you know, what I've got to do is, you know, just remember it in my head and also uh, visualise his sort of posture as well. Then, perfect, all done, great. I was then gestured to go and greet the great McKendry. I introduced myself as an avid collector of... Wearing such items such as himself and that things, maybe we can come up with some sort of deal for the items that I had. Supposedly safely stored away somewhere such as, like what he did. While I was saying this, I quickly realised something. Shit! I forgot his name. What was that? Oh, I like his name. What was the name? Oh, shit. Come on. Is it? Is it? Yeah, it's in my head. Come on, just gotta think. <sighs> And then I realised, you know, just just avoid it. Just avoid names and that. I mean, a professional circumstance like this, you know, we, we're not calling each other by names. We'll just go by uh, Sir. I'm assuming he was a Sir. He sounded like a Sir. He had deep enough voice to be a Sir, so... Yeah, I'm calling him a Sir. I then decided to ask him why we decided to meet here. Since that wasn't in any of the tapped air recordings that USP managed to maintain. He told me that he never liked to be far from his collection and always wanted to be there to protect it, so whenever he could, he would stay here at his base. Obviously this means that the stolen artifacts and that and rare items must be nearby, there must be somewhere on this base, and somewhere near him. Tom was thinking to himself, and then suddenly realised, 
They must be underneath him. He whispered it into my ear through the radio link. I mean, why else would he have this room so heavily gar- good and nice? I mean, he seems more concerned about his collection than his life himself. And suddenly it kind of made a bit of sense. Why to have so many guards and axe? It wasn't because... It wasn't that he was fearing like I was going to kill him. And axe or attack him. It was because I was going to... I can steal what's lay beneath. But how would you get to it? There didn't seem any obvious lift or passageway or anything. So how? Perhaps it's the throne itself. That's the lift, Tom suggested to me. And from what I could see, Tom was probably right. On each of the four corners of the throne, there were poles and that that seemed to just go down into the floor. I thought they were to help support it, although it could be a lift. Tom radioed me again. Look, I think me and Billy have found where their security system's power lies. If I can destroy it, then his base's defences will be... Gone. And USP will be able to get in no problem. You just have to keep him talking a bit longer, Don Free. <laughs> keep him talking, is that all? Talking is what I'm excellent at. Could you not tell, hmm? Well, I have just been sitting here talking about this podcast and that for God knows how long. So yeah, talking, talking is not a problem. So, I decided to ask a question. A question that I knew would get him talking for at least a little while. I asked him... So, what uh, started you into collecting rare and sort of priceless or odyssey artifacts? He said, Well, and yes, this is how he talked. Like most people, the artifact themselves is not the important point. The important point is of their significant value and of their rarity or oddity or general interest in people. I see, and there. Uh, why is that? Well, these artefacts are famous, well documented, and well known. And as history shows, when people go to look back on these artefacts that go missing in that, what do they always find? I shrugged and didn't really know. They always show and highlight the thief who collected them. In some cases, some people really admire them. But that isn't the point. The point is that they become famous, well-known throughout the galaxy. Wait, so that's your goal at the end of this? This is why you do this? Just to be famous? Fame is like immortality, even if you're famous for no matter how long of time. If you manage to sustain your fame up until your death... It means that you are truly immortal. It means that you will always be remembered for generations. People will go back and study your life. I think you can guess and see my point that I was going on earlier about him. About the whole dribble about life thing I was talking about before. Hmm, yeah. Suddenly the whole room thudded. The base was being attacked. By USP, led by our commanding officer, Commander Spat. You know, USP never seems to have any sense of subtlety, do they? Always blazing into everything. Suddenly, some of the bricks from the walls and that were crashing down. One was about to hit McKendry. I managed, with all my strength, to shove him out the way. After all, it wasn't me to judge when he lived or died. I sort of felt sort of a personal collection with him. In a lot of ways, he was kind of like me, just going a different way about it. Unfortunately, doing this made my ID mask fall off. And McKendry's reaction to it was, Who are you, imposter? You have downed me, you fairy behaven. Yes, well, that's a big thank you for saving your life, isn't it? You won't get to enjoy it. If I lose my collection now... I will lose my fame. My fame has not gone on long enough yet. I'll just be the news of the week. Quickly forgotten about. I say to him, eh, who knows. Maybe if you kick up enough fuss at that trial, that might extend a bit longer. It might be long enough. 
The kangaroo thought to himself for a minute. And he said to me, You could be right. Maybe. Unfortunately, he would never get the opportunity to do it. As our good old Commander Spat came in, guns blazing, shooting in every direction, not even thinking to care for a second. And one of those shots hit McKendry. Not quite killing him, but might as well be. It effectively made him brain dead and also motionless. I stormed up to him and said, You have no right, Sax. You have no right to be the commander of this and the executioner of him. He looked at me, he said, You didn't read your job description, did you? <laughs> job description? <laughs> is that what this is? You bastard! <laughs> and I punched him, knocking him to the ground. I then stormed off back to the ship as Billy and Tom entered. Both of them ran after me, but I was in no mood to be talking to them now. Tom just said to me, Calm down, Don Free. Just calm down. You know, we can work this out. We can apply for, you know, proper justice. Proper justice, Tom. Proper justice. <laughs> that guy in there now. He's pretty much dead. Well, no, he is. An axe. I mean, he's pretty much lost everything. He's had all his rights now. Just taken away from him. And you think that's right? You think this is what we should be working for? Hmm? Do you think this is who we should be working for? I'm going back to Earth. I'm going back to Earth right now. But if you stay, maybe we can make it better? That voice. It came from Billy. Billy, standing up for himself and that. Giving his own thoughts, his own opinion. Something that I had never seen before. Billy, he was just like me. He was just like me. That could happen to me. I mean, why do you think I've been so working hard on that to try and keep my career and that alive? Because I don't want to end up like that. Forgotten. Truly dead. Tom again, pretty much signed this looking at me. Then, Billy spoke again. We'll make an appeal. Maybe, I don't know, we can get Earth and that to interfere with this bullshit. Maybe, I said. Well, I think we should pay a visit to this place's benefactor, don't you? Because I doubt their benefactor is all squeaky clean, do you think? Hmm? They both nodded at me, and we went off in the ship, leaving our commander leaving USP, disobeying orders to return. We were going to find USP's benefactor. And like it or not, he was going to listen to me.